Yo, what's up guys and welcome to the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. Now, I'm a huge fan of Capcom. I love Capcom games. Street Fighter, Mega Man, Resident Evil. But one of the one game series that I've always been interested in but never really played is the Ace Attorney games. Basically in this game series, you're playing as an Ace Attorney. You gotta prove your client's innocent. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. So let's lawyer up. Alright, so we got three games here. We have Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, uh, Phoenix Wright Justice for All, and Phoenix Wright uh, Trials and Tribulations. But we're going to start with Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. It is the first game in the series, after all. Um, episode 1, the first turnabout, so let's get started. I'm ready to put all my years of law school into practice. I've never been to law school, but hopefully I'll learn fast. Gasp, gasp. Okay, that's, um, grim. Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this! I don't know who's talking. I've got to find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. So this guy's the murderer. I'll make it look like he did it. This guy's the murderer and he's framing this innocent man. August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court. Uh, defendant lobby number two. All right. Boy, am I nervous. Right? Oh, hi, Chief. Whew, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I am impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my uh, current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! <laughs> My life, everything, it's all over! This guy's going through an existential crisis literally before the, uh, literally before the trial's about to begin. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. Death! Despair! Oh! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. That I think that much is obvious. Um, yeah. Nick! Oh man, look at this dude's eyes. Yeah, he, he's totally lost it all, right? Hey, hey there, Larry! Dude, I'm so guilty! Tell them I'm guilty! <laughs> Give me the death sentence, I ain't afraid to die! This guy is really, um... <laughs> oh, man. What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over! I... I'm finished! FINISHED! I can't, I can't live in a world without her, I can't! Who... Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Ah, uh, Nick, you gotta tell me! Who took my baby away? <laughs> This guy's really going through something. Person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspapers say it was you. Well, we know it's not you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. It looks very simple, right? A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. That was very not subtle. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I own one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm gonna do. Alright. So let's get to cracking this case then. August 3rd, 10 a.m., District Court, uh, court, no, 
Courtroom number two. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Uh -huh. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I'm, um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Alright. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your read- your readiness. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Gold. Hands shaking. Eyesight. Fading. This dude's- this dude's first stay on the job, and he has to defend his best friend accused of murder. He's really got the whole- he's really got the whole shebang here. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Uh, Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you, and you'll be fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Woo! I know this one. Glad I read the case report to cover so many times. It's... Wait. Uh-oh! No. No, wait! I forgot! I'm drawing a total blank here! Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? I got I gotta come up with a voice for um for Mia here. You don't even know the victim's name? That's that's the best I can do. Oh, oh the victim! Of, of course I know the victim's name. I um just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Alright. Mr. Wright, who's the victim in this case? Uh, let's check the court record then. Cause of death, loss of blood due to blunt trauma, time of death, 7.31, uh, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Alright, I believe this is the victim? Yep, Cindy Stone. The victim in this case, a model. She lived in the apartment by herself. Nice, I'm getting the hang of this already. Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Let me let me think of a voice to give the judge as well. <clears throat> now tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I'm seeing no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good job for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Alright. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor? As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accept this, accepts it into evidence. Hey, stash it out of the court record. I guess I'm going to need this stuff later. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use tab to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. Prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Now, so what does he do? I actually want to find out now. Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together! We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra, and Mark Anthony. Didn't they all die? <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I'm sorry to say, but this guy might be might be doomed from the start. I wasn't dumb, she wasn't taking my calls or seeing me, ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, 
What you describe is generally what we mean by dumps. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. I feel bad for this guy already. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your honor of the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. Indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes. Older men who gave her money and gifts. She's a gold digger. <laughs> She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. DUDE! You can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... Uh, wait and see what happens. Stop him from answering. I actually want to see what happens. To be honest. Might be better not to get involved in this one. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude! No way! That cheating she dog! I'm gonna die! I'm just gonna drop dead! Yeah, when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this! Alright. <laughs> Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused. The accused's motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Go. <laughs> well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh. She <laughs> went. What do I do? I haven't met here honestly. I know. I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was there. I went. Order. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She was at home, man. So, like, I didn't see her. Objection. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying. The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Ooh, that doesn't look good. Order! Order in the court! I love when they say that. Order, order. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, your honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Selway, I think that's what it says, to the stand. Oh, dude, why are you smiling like that? Mr. Selway, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh yes, oh yes, newspaper, yes. That's literally the voice when they get him. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who thinks this dude literally looks like the happy mask salesman from Legend of Zelda. Mr. Sowitz, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witness testimony. Wait, when does this count? I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door. Sorry, I forgot my voice. Hold on. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. I figured it's strange I looked inside the apartment when I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I called. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. 
The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry! Why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Dude, you're a, you're a lawyer. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to argue with the prosecution. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of I have a record of the blackout for your per perusal. Blackout record added to the court record. Okay. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, er, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross examination. C cross examination, Your Honor. All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then once you found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record with tab, then point out the contradictions in the testimony. Alright, so we gotta find the lies. Alright, Mr. Happy Mask Salesman, tell me how it happened again. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions, when I saw a man fleeing the apartments. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartments. Then I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving, dead! I quelled in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. Okay, so the electricity in Mr. Stone's building was out from noon, 6 p.m. on the- Okay, here we go. Uh, time of death. 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Okay, so it was- So, that part is true. Okay. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Where's that- Where's that file again? Hold on. Oh yeah, here it is. Time of death, July 31st, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Sir, that's wrong! OBJECTION! OBJECTION! You found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe! Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes in the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to... Er... No body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? I got him there. Oh, that's. Oh, uh. Okay. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sowitz? Why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I. Er, well, I... see. that's a really good question. Good job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions! Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? The second witness testimony, here we go. The time of the discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. 
That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine with the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Alright. Let me hear that testimony one more time. See, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Ah, but it says here electricity in Mrs. Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. LIES! Hold it right there! The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Yeah, I will. <laughs> the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sowitz? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah! Wait, I remember now. Mr. Sowitz, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. Boy, I got him! I backed him right into a corner. My apologies, your honor. It's er, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sowitz. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Alright. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. He's just making himself look more and more stupid. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. <clears throat> Alright, so what are we gonna find this time? Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. Wait, actually, isn't this the murder weapon? I think it might be, hold on. Objection! Wait just a moment! The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was this statue! Now how is this supposed to be a clock? What? You with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sowit. <clears throat> My throat's getting a bit parched. I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I've submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright. It appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is the clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Ooh, man. Not that I know of? I think I'm just gonna say no for now. I guess not. There was a clock on the scene, so no problem. Right, are you out of your mind? That clock doesn't look like a clock at all. The witness couldn't have possibly known it was a clock just by seeing it. He said himself, he never entered the apartment. It was in his testimony. Hey, you're right. Yeah, yeah to be honest, I probably would have never, uh, probably never would have thought about that. Hey, don't go, don't go hard on me. It's my, it's my first day. Is something a matter? Does the defense have anything to add? Yes, yes, I do. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm. Indeed. The witness knew it was a clock before he... Before he went into the apartment. You're lying! You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh, yeah? Prove it. 
Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the courts. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Silwitz, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon just spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why we're so certain about the time. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face! <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... That day... I... I never... Look, I... The clock... I heard... No, I mean I saw... <laughs> Did he... He just ripped off his hair and just threw it at my face! Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It, it was him, I tell you. I saw him! He killed her, and she, and she should burn! Burn! Give her death! <laughs> Bruh. Oh man, this is... They're really going all out with this. Your Honor, as a moment, please. There is a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honor. You claim the sound the witness heard came from was the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think through it carefully. Your Honor, the sound Mr. Sewitt heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Try sounding the clock, maybe? Let's sound the clock here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I asked the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's... 825. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. Where are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ouch! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sewitt heard at the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sewitt, try to talk away. Try to talk your way out of this one! Yeah! <laughs> you forgot one thing! Oh, what's he talking about now? While it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing! How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case! He's right. How am I supposed to prove that? Damn it, I was so close! Mr. Wright. It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. I love doing these voices, even though they're kinda hurting my current kinda hurting my throat now. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately. This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sewitt. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens! You treat me like a criminal? A CRIMINAL?! YOU LAWYERS ARE ALL THE SLIME! Girl, I almost had it. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Well, that sucks. Not so fast, Mr. Sewitt. Mia, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think! But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock wasn't the slow of the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking outside the box. 
Don't waste time downing the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow, and think through it! Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason, and you'll have your proof. Right, right? Right, 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 right. <laughs> can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? I guess I could try. Wait! Maybe I can prove it! You must have the evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There's a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. I haven't tried this yet, so... TAKE THAT! Take that! <laughs> the victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow. It was 9 hours fast! The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in the apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? <laughs> oh, that was so corny. He's shriveling here. Oh! He's foaming at the mouth! Order! Order, I say! Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, your honor. Oh, does that mean I win? Mr. Wright? Yes, your honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, your honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Come on, not guilty. Yes! Not guilty! I'm free to go, man. And with that, this court is adjourned. Woo! That was epic. It turns out that Frank Sawit was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see what when people were out of the house. That day... So this is the full story. When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let him in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. And what? Bam! August 3rd, 2.32 p.m., District Court, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Ooh, I still can't believe we won! Right, good job in there. Congratulations! Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fight your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine... Imagine... If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Larry, you're supposed to be happy! What's wrong now? Aw, oh, Nick. Don't worry about me! I'll be dead and gone soon! Good. Wait, no, I mean bad! Bad, bad, bad! Phoenix, were you happy to see this guy in pain? Like, dude. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But my Cindy Windy's gone, man! Gone forever! Larry? She was a... Nah, never mind. This dude Larry is down bad. <laughs> Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocence. Wait. Heh. <laughs> 
Um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat? Oh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I ruined one for her and one for me. Really? You? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Okay. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And... And she was just playing before a fool. Don't that make you want to cry? Larry? Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? She did it right, right, right. <laughs> It just rolls right off the tongue. Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? I don't know, I guess she kept this. Take that! I'm still proving people wrong even outside of court. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever, she probably needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am, thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right. I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me? We'll drink a toast to the innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you weren't saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Er, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Okay. And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's going to pay us. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us, unless you count the clock he gave me up. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Well, the end. That was fast. A brand new episode has been added. Nice. Oh, I accidentally just started the. I accidentally started the next episode. Whoops. All right, so I think that's gonna end this video. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you want to see me play more on um, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Uh, then, well, you already know what to do. Anyways, with that being said, I'm out of here, and peace out.